Let's look at three examples where we need to apply the Kirchhoff voltage rule and the Kirchhoff current rule. In the first example, we're tasked with finding the voltage V across the 10 ohm resistor. The first thing that I notice about this circuit is that the 10 volt source over here on the right defines the voltage across this particular 10 ohm resistor here. Let's apply the Kirchhoff voltage law to the outermost loop of this circuit. It's equivalent to applying the Kirchhoff voltage law for this innermost loop as well, because I can see by inspection that the voltages here are just the same. Let's start from the bottom of the 12 volt source and work our way clockwise. So I have a 12 volt rise across the 12 volt source. Then I'm going from positive to negative. So I have a fall of V. Now I'm going from positive to negative, so I have another fall of 10 volts. And then I can define the voltage across this 10 ohm resistor as V2, because I'm not sure what that voltage is yet. Let's say that the current coming out of the 12 volt source is I. That same current has to go through this 10 ohm resistor, and that same current has to flow through this 10 ohm resistor. In both cases, current flows from positive to negative. Applying Ohm's law across the top 10 ohm resistor, I can write V equals IR. Applying Ohm's law across the bottom 10 ohm resistor, I can write V2 equals IR. I now have three equations and three unknowns, V, V2, and I. It's enough information for me to find the voltage V. I can see that I is V2 divided by 10. This means that V is just V2. Going back to my loop equation, I can substitute in V for V2. I can conclude then we have a one volt drop across that top 10 ohm resistor. In example two, we're given a diode. Now a diode is different than a resistor. A diode does not have the relationship V equals IR. One of the things I've noticed is that a lot of beginners in electronics have a tendency or an instinct to write V equals IR, no matter what circuit element that they're dealing with. And one needs to remember that that is not correct. It's only correct when you have a resistor. This is a diode, not a resistor. I cannot say that V equals IR because R essentially is meaningless in the case of a diode. A diode is a nonlinear circuit element. We're going to have to find some other equation to write for the diode or to find the voltage and the current using some other method. Since this video is about the Kirchhoff voltage law and the Kirchhoff current law, let's use those in order to find these unknown quantities. Let's define the voltage across this resistor as V sub R, where R stands for resistor. We can find that voltage by applying Ohm's law since we're given the current and the resistance. V equals IR, so V equals 0.1 ampere times 10 ohms. Therefore, our voltage is one volt. I can see that this resistor is just in parallel with this diode. They're connected by wires. Things that are connected by wires have to sit at the same voltage. I can therefore write that V equals VR and it equals one volt. Now, how much current is flowing through that diode? I can't write V equals IR because a diode is not a resistor and the current I flowing through the diode is not the same as the current flowing through this resistor. To do that, we need to consider the influence of the 10 volt source. Let's define the current passing through this resistor as I1. Looking at this particular node, I can apply the Kirchhoff current law. I see that we have I1 coming into that node and we have I plus 0.1 amperes exiting that node. Let's now apply the Kirchhoff voltage law along the dotted loop. Let's start from down here. I see a 10 volt rise across the source. I see a fall of 10 times I1 across that resistor. And then I see a fall of V across the diode. I now have enough information to find the current I. If I start with the third equation, then I substitute in the second equation for I1. And then I substitute in my one volt for V from the first equation, I end up with an equation containing only I. After I move the nine over to the other side of the equation, multiply both sides by negative one, divide both sides by 10 and subtract 0.1, I wind up with an expression for current I of 0.8 amperes. Let's take a look at a more complicated example. 
Here we have nine resistors, and we're not told what the resistors are, but we're told that 1.2 amperes flows along this line, 600 milliamp flows along this line, and we're tasked with finding the current coming out of this mess of resistors. How are we going to do it? Well, one way to solve this problem would be to go and apply Ohm's law to every single resistor, and one would wind up with a large set of equations with quite a lot of unknowns. We would have to solve the set of equations simultaneously, and then we would find all of the voltages and currents in the circuit. But there is an easier way to solve this problem. And it boils down to application of the Kirchhoff current law. You see, the Kirchhoff current law not only works for a single solitary node in a circuit, but it also works for a supernode or a large collection of circuit elements grouped together. We know that if we have a particular current flowing into that set, we have to have the same current flowing out. In this case, we're told that 1.2 amperes flows in, 0.6 amperes flows out, along with unknown current I. Therefore, I equals 0.6 amperes. A difficult and tedious problem has been converted to a relatively easy problem by using the concept of a supernode. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you might be interested in following our playlist and learning more about the fundamentals of electrical circuits.